This is a big video for me. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you know why. I make a lot of content about Intel Arc on Linux, maybe more than I'd like to. Arc's current performance on Linux still leaves a lot to be desired, but there's still a lot of potential for Intel's GPU line on Linux, at least if Intel decides to continue making Arc products, and if Intel continues to contribute to open source. In a recent appearance, Kevork Kishishian, an executive who, according to the Register article I'm drawing this from, is in charge of Intel's data center operations, said, We have probably the largest footprint on open source out there, from an infrastructure standpoint. We need to find a balance where we use that as an advantage to Intel, and not let everyone else take it and run with it. Now, this doesn't tell us much, and later, a spokesperson reiterated that Intel remains deeply committed to open source, and that they'd like to, and I quote, reinforce the communities they've supported for decades. But we Linux users, especially desktop users, are getting mixed signals. On one hand, things like Intel Arc's support for both gaming and compute tasks on Linux continues to improve, regardless of my ability to keep up and make videos on that beat. XE3 support is getting pushed to the kernel, and has been for about a year now. In August, Intel hired Alyssa Rosenwig. She led the reverse engineering and development of Apple's graphics drivers on Linux. You might have heard of Asahi Linux, which came about after the Apple Silicon transition. And it's worth noting here, Rosenwig's hiring seems to be something everyone forgets when they say Intel Arc is canceled and everyone working on it is fired. But hey, maybe she's working on open source NVIDIA drivers. Of course, that last comment is only half sarcastic because it could legitimately be true. So on paper, Intel's still moving forward Linux-wise, but at the same time, we keep hearing about firings and departures. Clear Linux, Intel's proof of concept Linux distribution, is shut down. Clear Linux was Intel's gift to the ecosystem, but now they're pulling it back, fearing others benefited from its performance tweaks more than they did. It's the biggest, most glaring example of Intel contributions that run better on other people's silicon than their own. Cache OS is said to be integrating a number of remaining ClearOS optimizations. Back in July, Pharonix reported that Intel engineers will continue to work with other Linux distributions, but we don't know to what degree. Intel made a name for itself here, even if it's struggling with fabrication processes and silicon execution. Big corporate faceless Intel. Chipzilla. And yet, this work, the product of researching ways to improve Linux performance at large, was Intel at its best, humbled by rising competition, compelled by market forces to contribute, and dedicating resources to the open source core. In fact, that's exactly why the current news is so disappointing. I thought this open approach was a signal that a new Intel was emerging, not just one that modernized its silicon, but one that increasingly respected open source endeavors and the individual end user's right to tinker. I thought their strategic calculus had changed because while the likes of Microsoft directly influences computing, Intel providing deep support for open source is one of the only ways someone, some entity, can actively give users a viable high performance option beyond Windows. I mean, we're talking about a community of home labbers and power users who are just hoping Intel will open up features like SRIOV access on their consumer hardware. Through the company's past decade of existential struggle, it seemed Intel realized this. It shouldn't matter whose hardware their software helped in some cases. What mattered most was that their contributions moved computing forward, because it was to the benefit of potentially all involved, and could even bring in new customers and keep old ones. And let's be honest, it paid massive dividends from a PR and goodwill perspective, something Intel has struggled with in the past, branding Intel as an open collaborative partner, not a closed hardware monolith. Really, I thought Intel was quietly investing in open source because it saw an opportunity to shape an emerging paradigm of computing. And that paradigm, at the very least, includes desktop computing with more choice not less. But who will pick up the slack now? If you started using Linux in the past 15 years, there's a good chance you started on a cheap Optiplex or ThinkPad with an Intel chip inside. At the very least, if you plugged in a monitor, it worked. Before Proton, if you wanted to do something fun, you might have downloaded an emulator and ROMs of your favorite games, which at least worked even on the dinkiest Intel iGPU. 
If running Ethernet through walls wasn't an option, Intel Wi-Fi chips probably got you online. Today, Jellyfin's all the rage, and you might be running a media server on a recent Intel CPU or Arc GPU using AV1 encoding. Sure, you could get an NVIDIA card, but if you already have an Intel iGPU or GPU, you don't have to fight with drivers on Linux. As a YouTuber, I do a lot of video capture and encoding using Vapi, one of those open projects Intel and AMD developers work on together. That collaboration benefits every Linux user. While researching for this video, I rewatched an interview from a couple of years ago between Pat Gelsinger and Linus Tervalds. Intel's main campus is outside of Portland, Oregon, and Linus lives in Portland. In that video, Linus talks about buying the 8386 Programmer's Reference Manual written by Gelsinger. He says he used it to teach himself how the 386 worked. He also talks about how one of his motivations for writing Linux was that he couldn't afford an operating system at the time. Anyway, there's a quote I found amusing. Linus was talking about Intel beginning to support Linux and said something interesting. Let me read it. When I moved to the US, we had a lot of problems with Intel engineers that could not participate because legal said, no, you cannot do that. And then something happened and it was like a switch was turned and it must have been something inside where lawyers were told to make it work and Intel became one of the more active participants in open source. Maybe I'm reading this all wrong, but I think it was Pat Gelsinger who spoke firmly to those lawyers almost 30 years ago. He was rehired as Intel CEO in 2021 and forced into retirement effective December 1st, 2024. Three decades ago, someone at Intel told the lawyers to make it work. That person may have upheld the company's long-held principles, especially around open source. Those principles seem to have lasted until recently. Now, it seems the company wants to go in a different direction. We don't know to what degree Intel intends to pull back on open source contributions, but with the end of clear Linux development, we'll start to see the effects soon.